Hi, today I would like to talk to you about the technology of biosynthonics, which is unleashing the power of synthetic biology and transforming the prospects of the pharmaceutical industry. We all know the problems. It now costs well in excess of a billion dollars to bring a new drug to market, and the pharmaceutical industry is in dire need of effective drug discovery technologies. So what really is causing this problem? It's something known as the target-rich lead-poor imbalance, where most of the drugs that we keep on discovering and approving continue to hit the same chemical space. There is a sea of opportunities represented by the undrugged fraction on the, on the bar screen, yet we continue to completely ignore that space. So the answer is quite simple. We need better technologies to access better chemical space so that we can target the undrugged protein domains in the human body. We need to look at more natural product like molecules. But the industry continues to ignore this, this region of chemical space. Why is that? Well, it's easier said than done. Total synthesis of natural products is an encumbered. Look at the example of Taxol. 51 total steps with an abysmal overall yield. There's a reason for this. The very properties that make natural products excellent drugs are the very same properties that make them a nightmare for chemists. The alternative, which is to extract these molecules from the natural sources, is also difficult. So what's the alternative? Biosynthonics. Taking a page out of retrosynthesis, a term coined by E.J. Corey, Nobel laureate, a biosynthon is defined as a structural unit within a molecule that is the product of a specific biosynthetic unit operation. So take, a, take the example of terpenoid biosynthesis. Terpenoids are a class of 170,000 molecules, several of which are pharmacoactive. Using the mevalonate or non-mevalonate pathway, we can produce the universal isoprenoid precursors, IPP and DMAPP. IPP and DMAPP then represent very elegant Lego blocks that can be combined using very simple chemistries to produce the complex molecule that is Taxol. An end-to-end -end condensation elongates the chain. You can run several elongation reactions until you have a really long chain and then you can deploy the cyclization module to then buckle the chain, collapse it, and create a cyclic cage-type structure. Once we have this cyclic scaffold, we can then activate it using a type of enzyme known as a cytochrome P450 monooxygenase, which then oxidizes the scaffold. Oxidation of the scaffold prepares it for downstream functionalization reactions, such as esterifications and adding ester groups then ends up adding hydrogen bond donors and acceptors, which gives it great degrees of freedom when it is binding the target inside the body. So now we have an unprecedented platform to not only discover drugs, but also manufacture them. And remember, we're doing this from simple renewable feedstocks. So all in all, the grand vision of biosynthonics commences with genomics discovery, or metagenomics, to identify interesting gene sequences that encode very interesting chemistries, and then deploy these chemistries in parallel with fragment-based drug discovery to identify interesting scaffolds that are the foundations for potent new drugs. Then using metabolic engineering, which is the engine of biosynthonics, we can produce activated scaffolds, which we can then choose to further use biosynthesis to produce the functionalized uh, downstream products, or we can then interface uh, metabolic engineering with combinatorial chemistry and other such chemical methodologies to build on the activated scaffolds to produce the drug molecules of interest. So all in all, biosynthonics is the ultimate paradigm for pharmaceutical manufacturing and drug discovery. Thank you.